السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters This evening's verses were amazing because they are filled with wisdom Not to say that the rest of the Quran is not But subhanallah sometimes there is a chord that strikes When Allah speaks to us what is amazing is we see his signs, we see his verses at a time when we need those verses. The Quran is filled with so many instructions. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is filled with so much. But every time it seems like when we hear a verse or we see a hadith, it was designed for us at that moment. We needed the guidance. Let me give you an example. In life, my beloved brothers and sisters, we need to make decisions. Sometimes we are not sure about these decisions and we don't know. So Allah tells us you follow a certain way. You pray to Allah. You seek guidance from those who love you, from those who care for you, from those who are professionals in the field. That is called mushawara or mashwara. وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورَا بَيْنَهُمْ Allah speaks about how their affairs are discussed with mutual consultation. You have an issue, a major issue. You talk about it to someone you trust, number one, someone who cares for you, number two, and someone who has knowledge in that particular matter, number three. Then you make dua to Allah and you seek the guidance of Allah and Allah will open your ways in one way or another. Now, Sometimes we desperately want something, but Allah does not open the door. And sometimes we don't want something, but Allah is driving us towards that thing. It happens. I desperately want a job. I desperately want to get married somewhere. I desperately want to move somewhere. I desperately am looking for something. It is just not coming. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ it is possible at times that you detest something, but it's better for you. You know, your boss suddenly fires you. Unjustified. And you don't know why did this happen? I was innocent. And you make dua to Allah. You ask Allah, you call out to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help seems not to be coming. But if you're a believer, you know, Perhaps there is something good in what seems to be bad at this point. And sometimes you really want something or want to get out of something and you don't know Allah is keeping you there. So that is why the rest of that verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Indeed, perhaps... There are things that you love that are not good for you. Indeed, Allah knows what you don't know. And Allah knows you do not know. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Brothers and sisters, a sign of iman is contentment. That's a sign of iman. When you are a true mu'min, you are happy upon all conditions. The Prophet ﷺ says, amazing are the affairs of a true believer for all his affairs are always good for him. If goodness comes, he is thankful. He becomes closer to Allah. It was better. If bad befalls him, he bears patience. It was better for him. And he says, oh Allah, it could have been worse. La ilaha illallah. This is the gift of Allah. So these verses are so impressive. Then there were other verses we read tonight that drew me into a different zone altogether. They were about talaq. Talaq means divorce. You know, we get married, we want the marriage to work, we're excited the day that the vows are exchanged and the day that everything is happening, we're so excited and thereafter, do you know what? Subhanallah, things start falling away in many cases nowadays. It is a sacrifice. Marriage is not a perpetual honeymoon. We've said that before. It is a sacrifice. You need to sacrifice, change your life in order to be able to get along with your spouse. You need to have dedication. You need to make each other feel important. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let that happen. But sometimes we have differences. In some cultures and faiths, 
divorce is not permissible at all. You married, that's a life sentence. It's over. Literally a life sentence. And subhanallah, in some cultures they divorce, they don't even marry. They are together and not together. And the next day someone else. And the following day another. And the fifth day a fifth person. Islam is a balance. Allah tells you no. You marry, you are dedicated. You are focused. You make sure it works. You try and try again. If for some reason something goes wrong and it didn't work, Allah says, we give you two chances, not just one. Subhanallah. At-talaqu marratan fa'imsakun bima'roofin aw tasrihun bi'ihsan. Those are some of the most powerful verses when it comes to divorce. Allah says, divorce can only happen twice. Thereafter, you either leave them, you either hold them with goodness or you leave them with goodness. You hold them in a way that is known, that is common, that is the norm, or you release them with goodness, with kindness. Why does Allah say this? Do you know, we have a misunderstanding that when you want to divorce someone, you say talaq, 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 and it's done. No, that is a wrong way of doing things. Did you know that that is sinful? It is actually prohibited to say that and to do that. You're not supposed to be issuing more than one at any given time. So those who tell you that's how you divorce, they don't know. Allah says you only divorce once and then you still have a chance. If for example, you want to reconcile after that, there is a scope because Islam is based on mercy. Subhanallah. Allah says you might separate after the first divorce and after a while you might decide you know what I'm missing you man I'm missing your food subhanallah especially if it is Turkish food mashallah <laughs> Allah bless all of us barakallah feekum my beloved brothers and sisters and then you decide well obviously that's petty but I'm only giving you an example because one might say well who cooks here you know and we get into another debate and by the way the men are better chefs than women that's what the world was told I think May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to protect ourselves from such debates. Because in all honesty, all we need is just good food. Getting back to what I was saying. So you might miss your spouse. And what will happen as a result is you decide, you know what? I want to get back together. Some cultures say, no, not allowed. Islam says, no problem. You want to get back again together? There is no harm in coming back. You only gave one divorce. After that, you got along, you spent some time. Maybe there is a chance things might go wrong once again. You gave another divorce. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you have one more chance. One more chance. After that, you take her back. Then you cannot divorce. After that, a third time thinking that you can take her back. Once the third one goes in, you have to separate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. So it is something impressive because people think that the rules of divorce in Islam are barbaric. No, they are actually the best and the most reasonable and the most filled with mercy. So much so that some people say, why is it that I need to marry someone else before I can go back to my old husband? Let me quickly explain to you. If it's the one talaq, you get back, there is no need to marry someone else. If it is the second one, you get back, there is no need to marry someone else. If it is the third one, Allah says, you guys don't appreciate each other. You now have to go into a different situation altogether. Maybe if that doesn't work without any interference from you, you might then appreciate your previous spouse. Doesn't that make sense? Doesn't that make sense? I drove a Toyota for many years. Sorry to give you the example of motor vehicles. Thereafter, I gave it up for another car. But guess what? I had to come back to it after some time because I realized only after driving a different vehicle that you know what? That Toyota would take me from here to Kenya. The only thing I would need was petrol. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. By no means do I mean to promote the vehicle itself, but it is a good car, right? <laughs> My brothers and sisters, thus is the beauty of Allah. Their verses are filled with goodness, but inshallah, we will continue by the will of Allah again tomorrow, if Allah wills. And until then, may Allah forgive us, grant us from His mercy, and open our doors. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.